Today's video is gonna be about this. Wait, that's a little small. Let's make it bigger. There we go. That's more like it. Hey everyone and welcome back to Hoffman Engineering. Today we're going to explore the world of crystal clear 3D printing using high transparency resin from Nova 3D. Now I've used a lot of clear resins before, particularly in making these clear dice. However, clear resins end up not being very clear. You often get very uh, kind of yellow clear-ish prints, but even when you polish the clear resin, they end up, while they polish well, they end up still being a little bit yellow and not crystal clear. So when I found out that Nova 3D has what they call high transparency resin, that's offering kind of crystal clear resin performance, I knew I had to reach out. So I reached out to them and they were kind enough to provide me a bottle of their high transparency resin. So while they sent the bottle for me to try out, they aren't sponsoring this video. They're not paying me to say good things about their products. They just provided me a bottle for me to try out and then I'll let you guys know how, uh, how crystal clear is their high transparency resin if you're looking for crystal clear prints yourself. So let's give this a try. Let's throw it into a resin 3D printer and see just how highly transparent this actually is. As with any resin, glove up. So I'm gonna be using Chitubox as my slicer. So Nova 3D provides printing parameters and they say that this high transparency resin takes about three times the exposure of normal clear resins. So with the longer orange 4 k normally it would be two seconds per layer. So I'm gonna increase that exposure to six seconds per layer. They also say three bottom layers at 20 seconds per layer. With these exposure settings, and let's go print. And the first thing I notice when I pour in the resin is that this is very fluid. It is not a very viscous resin. And it has a lot of bubbles when it first goes in, but the bubbles pop really quickly. So I'm gonna pour it in. I'm gonna give this a couple of minutes to let the bubbles settle out. I'll even lower down the build plates and help the build plates uh, kind of push out the bubbles that are in the resin, and hopefully that will clear it out. And look at that, after just a couple of minutes, enough time to slice my file, this resin is bubbleless. There's a couple of bubbles here and there, but it looks like most of them have popped. So that's really crucial because bubbles could actually persist in your prints. Print started, I'll see you guys in two hours and 28 minutes. And the print has finished. Let's take a look at that. At first glance, it does look very, very clear. Let's zoom in a little bit. And here it is still in the printer and it looks really clear. It looks like it all printed well, so let's get it out of here, let's get it washed and let's take a look. But so far, I'm really impressed. So I think, I think those supports melded together right there. That's unfortunate. Now that we know that the settings somewhat work, let's go print an entire set of dice and see how that turns out. And two and a half hours later, we have some success. It looks like some of it pulled off of the supports, but uh, let's go take this out of the printer and see how it turned out. Oh, it looks like most of it pulled off of the supports. We've got just two that's completed. The other ones did not print successfully. That is quite unfortunate. Let's see how these two turned out. And just like before, we can take our snippers and try to peel off these supports. But these are really, really brittle supports. And just like before, these supports are all fused together. Uh, it shouldn't be quite this solid chunk of support. These off, but as you can see, the, the base here is just one giant chunk of cured resin. And that's unfortunate. So let's print a few more things. Let's try a couple of dice printed directly on the print bed, no supports this time. And let's try a figurine to see how that works. And on initial glance, the dice look good. Without there being any supports, there is no supports to fuse together and form unsightly blobs. Uh, so that worked pretty well. The figurine had a lot of supports and the supports at the base tended to fuse together. But once it got, I don't know, maybe 10 to 15 millimeters above, uh, it stopped fusing together and the detail is actually pretty good. With the dice printed, I'm gonna try a couple of things. First, I'm gonna try my dice polishing technique. You may remember a few videos ago, I did some 3D printed dice and went through my process of learning how to sand and polish them. You can see the link in the card if you wanna see that video yourself. So I'm gonna follow the same technique. I'm gonna start with 1500 grit sandpaper and then work my way up through the micro mesh polishing pads all the way up to 12,000 grits. And that takes a bit of time. 
Um, especially when you're working with dice that has multiple surfaces, you need to sand each of those surfaces. Uh, but after about 30 to 45 minutes uh, per dice, we're left with a pretty well sanded and somewhat polished dice. But the last step is to use Meguiar's Plastic X uh, Plastic Cleaner and Polish and use a microfiber cloth to rub that into the surface. And that's gonna do the final polishing. So this is the result after the final polishing. And it is not quite as clear as I was expecting. You can see on the bottom surface uh, that the numbers all polished away that didn't actually even print. Those overhangs directly on the print bed, they just didn't print. Um, but this isn't as clear as I was expecting going through 12,000 grits and then finishing with McGuire's Plastic X. It's the same thing with the D8s. Uh, it did polish pretty well. Um, we can see that it is a, a pretty shiny surface. My technique, I still need to refine my technique. I've uh, kind of beveled or rounded off some of the edges, um, but that's more of my technique than it is the resin itself. But we can see that it is pretty clear. You can see straight through it, and it doesn't have any of the yellowing that I've seen on other clear resins. So that is a plus. But maybe the Meguiar's Plastic X doesn't work uh, well with this, or maybe it's my technique that didn't get it, you know, a mere super crystal clear finish here. So I wanted to print a diamond for an enlarged version of my wife's engagement ring and wedding band. You may remember a few years ago that I designed, printed, and cast my wife's engagement ring and wedding band. If you want to see that video, you can click the link in the cards. But I thought it would be cool to print a version that's 10 times larger, which means that I need a diamond that is also 10 times larger. At first, I hollowed the diamond because I didn't necessarily think that it would print well uh, with such a large surface area. Normally, you want to minimize surface area. So I hollowed it out, leaving a wall thickness of one and a half millimeters. But when I printed it, I was not happy with the results. It seems that this resin has problems printing overhangs. It tends to fuse together into a block as opposed to printing nice clear overhangs. So any kind of overhangs where you normally need supports, either you add supports and the supports tend to fuse together or you don't add supports and still risk it not printing those overhangs correctly. So the hollow version just wasn't going to work. So I figured we'll go ahead and give it another try and it turned out really good. With it still being in the printer, it looks very spectacular. It's still covered with uncured resin and that really helps hide any kind of layer lines or surface imperfections and makes it very optically clear. That is an awesome look. Unsurprisingly, the supports fuse together. So then I'm gonna go through and I'm going to sand and try to define the diamond surface again. I'm gonna sand off all of that extra resin and try to get some of those facets in here. I am not a diamond cutter by any means. I do not have much experience when it comes to uh, polishing or anything like that. Um, so I'm gonna give it my best effort. Start with 800 grits and just try to knock down and refine that profile back to something that's close to the original shape. And I think that turned out really well. I did a pretty good job of getting the facets back and the profile back into place. And it looks really good. Of course, with all the extra resin washed off, it is no longer as optically clear as it was before but I'm gonna try something different. And I figured if we're dealing with crystal clear, high transparency objects, we might as well print a magnifying glass. Let's see if this will work for some optical lenses. So I grabbed a magnifying glass model off of Thingiverse and I printed it. And with it still being on the print bed, covered in uncured resin, we can see that it looks really optically transparent. It is an incredible effect looking through that lens. So I have really high hopes for this. That's gonna decrease as soon as we pull it off the print bed and wash it and cure it. With it cured, we can take a look at it and we can see that uh, you can see the individual layers and it is pretty clear, but it's not perfectly crystal clear. So I have all of my polishing and sanding equipment out. Let's try to polish it like we would one of those dice from earlier. I've never polished lenses before, but I'm gonna go through the same process of using the micro mesh pads and with a circular motion going around the lens and working my way up from 1500 grits up to the 12,000 grits micro mesh pad. And at the end, we can see that it does work. You can see that it does do an okay job uh, as an actual magnifying glass, but I think we can get better. So let's try a couple techniques. First, let's try clear coats. The only clear coat that I have is this crystal clear enamel 
Uh, so we'll see if this works on this resin. So I'm gonna give a couple of very light coats of the crystal clear enamel and see how that turns out. So you can see the clear coat did an okay job, but it left a texture. There's like a very slight texture on the surface that I think decreases the, uh, the clarity. I'm not sure exactly what happened. Maybe it can't be enamel. Maybe it needs to be some other kind of clear coat, but I'm not entirely happy with the clear coat. It does work. If I have this benchy behind it, we can see that's, you know, it does magnify the benchy. So that is pretty cool, but there's some pitting and I'm just not too happy with that result. And same with the uh, unpolished dice. So this was the dice that's all of the supports fused at the bottom. I didn't do any kind of surface prep or polishing or sanding. This is straight out of the printer. And we can see that it still has a little bit of that surface finish. I'm not sure what the enamel is doing on here, but I would say don't use Rust-Oleum Crystal Clear Enamel on the Nova 3D uh, clear resin. It doesn't exactly work the way that it should. But there is some promise here, so let's take a look at a second technique for surface coating. Another technique that I've heard for crystal clear resin prints is using mineral oil. And that mineral oil, you just wipe it on the surface and that helps to get into any of the imperfections on the surface itself and makes it a lot clearer. So I'm just gonna take some mineral oil and rub it over the diamond and see how that affects things. And immediately, it makes a big difference. I really like the effect. The diamond looks awesome with the mineral oil applied. And if we take a look at it here, it looks really good. It is very, very transparent. You can see right through the diamond and it does reflect the way that I was hoping for. Uh, of course, the mineral oil doesn't dry. It will actually just be sitting on the surface and it leaves you know, an oily coating on the surface. Uh, if you wipe it all off, then it doesn't really work as much. You need to leave a little bit of a thin film of the mineral oil on there, but it does a really good job. I would love to see what it looks like on something like this with you know all of the facets polished, uh, but I'm not gonna give that a try. But I can say that that is a viable technique for making transparent 3D prints even more transparent using some mineral oil. So I have to say I am pretty impressed with the Nova 3D high transparency crystal clear resin. Uh, it does a really good job of having a clear print um, it minimizes bubbles within the print. It does a really good job of that. And it doesn't yellow like a lot of other clear resins will. You, know, you can see a normal clear resin off to the side. It is yellowed, yellowed over time just due to UV exposure. But the uh, Nova 3D high transparency resin, it doesn't yellow, or at least it hasn't yellowed in the month that I've been printing various pieces. Uh, so if you're looking for a clear resin that doesn't yellow, uh, then this might be a good option. And we've explored a couple of coating techniques. Uh, clear enamel doesn't work the way that I was hoping for, um, but the mineral oil does do a good job of restoring like optically transparent uh, properties back to this resin. So you can give that a try for sure. You will have to deal with uh, supports. Supports are really hard to print on this. I'm guessing it's just because it's a clear resin, the light maybe ba bounces together and you have to use a much longer curing time. So that probably affects how thin pillar supports uh, fuse together. So beware of supports, beware of large overhangs. Like if you're printing this on the surface, those overhangs are really tough to print. Um, but if you can minimize the amount of overhangs and the support density and get it away from the bed a little bit, then you can really get some high quality prints. I'm still impressed with this diamond. It looks really, really good. So thank you all for watching. Uh, if you have any questions about this, leave it in the comments down below. I would love to answer what I can. And if you have any tips for printing with high transparency or crystal clear resin, leave those in the comments down below. Maybe I'll have a follow-up video exploring some of your own techniques. Uh, that might be really interesting. And thank you for joining me on this journey. It was fun to uh, test this stuff out. So thanks for watching and I'll see you all next time.